Hi, this is Gerald Salenti. It's Friday, June 24th, 2016. And here are some of today's trends in the news. And what a day this is. A day that will live in infamy. History was made yesterday when the people in the UK exited the EU. That's right. Now let's go back and look at the polls and look at the data. Do you remember what happened just about a week ago? They assassinated Joe Cox, the woman who was a parliamentary member in the United Kingdom. And she was a strong proponent for staying in the EU, a Remain vote. So we saw the numbers go in a complete flip, where after that happened, the polls showed that more people wanted to stay in than leave. Before that happened, several percent more wanted to leave than stay. And then they called a halt to campaigning. And then it resumed this past Monday. Going into the vote on Thursday, the polls, the hedge funds, the experts all said the UK is going to stay. They're not going to Brexit. Look at the numbers. The numbers don't lie. You saw the Dow yesterday, up, up over 200 points. Across the board, all the indexes up. Gold getting knocked down because they were going to stay in the EU. So, of course, we know what happened. They chose to Brexit, stage right. <laughs> we're leaving. It was unanticipated by most, but the important element is that suppose that woman was not killed. The numbers would have been even greater than the 48 that wanted to stay and the 48 that wanted to leave, the 52, excuse me, that wanted to leave would have been. It would have been much higher. So what this vote is about, it's more than wanting to leave the EU. It's about the very fundamentals of society, the general public disgusted with the politicians that are running their country and robbing them of their future. The two elements that drove the people to leave with two issues. The cheap labor forces coming in from Eastern Europe that are part of the Euro's, Euro uh, zone that could freely go between borders, taking away jobs from the British. That's what they said. That's what the Leave camp was rallying on. Plus, they were claiming to lose their national identity and were tired of being globalized. The underlying element is that this was a trigger point to shoot off the bullets that are going to start the panic of 2016 that was our top trend for this year that we released back in December of 2015. The panic of 2016, the cover of the Trends Journal. This was the trigger, the Brexit. While a lot of this had to do with politics, the underlying driver is economics. Because the central banks, Brussels or the Bank of England, in this case, or the Bank of uh, uh, the, the European Central Bank in the Euro group, of which the UK was not part of, have done nothing to create jobs for the working people. The wealth gap, as you well know the numbers, whether it's in the United States with the 1% getting 95% of the wealth created by the central banks since 2009, or the 62 folks around the world that have more dough than half the world's population put together. That's what this vote is about. And the bigger element of this vote is that it's going on around Europe. 
As soon as that Brexit vote came in, all of a sudden you started hearing from France, from the Netherlands, from Italy, from other countries around Europe. We want a referendum, direct democracy, let the people vote, and the people are voting the end of globalization. And what this vote yesterday was, is the beginning of the end of the European Union. It's the beginning of the end of the European Central Bank, even though the UK was not part of the Euro group and not a member of the European Central Bank. Because once those other referendums kick in, bam, they're out. Exit, stage right. Populist movements from the Freedom Party and over up in Austria. From the AFD, the Alternative for Deutschland, over in Germany. The parties in Netherlands. The Five Star Movement in Italy that just brought in a mayor that was, for the first time in history in Rome, a woman from another party outside the main bloc. It's a global trend. On the political elements in the United States, this is going to be very beneficial for Donald Trump. Obama and Clinton campaigned for the UK to stay in the EU. Trump didn't. Trump is trumpeting his opposition to globalization, multinationalization, and the trade pacts. The Brexit is a shot at the trade agreements. So in the long term, this is going to benefit Trump, as we've said in the Trends Journal, because he's going to hit Clinton on the issues of trade. And she's associated with NAFTA and, of course, called the Trans-Pacific Partnership the gold standard before she changed her mind. So let's look what happened to the markets. Phew, Nikkei down over 8%. You look what happened in the Shanghai. Boom. It was really plummeting, and all of a sudden that plunge protection team came in there. Look at the chart. Pushed it back up. That's right, the plunge protection team. The plunge protection team in the United States, the national team in China. Same teams, different names. They're rigging the market. This has nothing to do with free enterprise. No, the market should collapse and let them collapse if it's capitalism. But no, we can't let our guys get hurt. Here in the States, boom, market down over 600 points. This is not a crash. A crash has gone back to 87 when the market goes down over 20 points in one day. But this is a trend, and the trend is the panic of 2016 and the volatility that we've seen since the beginning of this year when the Dow opened up on the worst note in its history. And now we had another historical day and not a lot of hysteria. Be calm. This is a buying opportunity. Turn on the prostitutes on CNBC, Bloomberg, and all the rest. You'll hear them blab it all out. Gold. Gold was up as high as $90, closed up 60 And you know our forecast? We came out with it three weeks ago when we said gold would be over $1,300 an ounce. Our forecast now is, as we've been saying, and we maintain it, that when gold hits over $1,400 an ounce, stabilizes above that price, boom, zap, bat, a spike to a 2000 So here's some of the reports. Dow closes down 600 after Brexit surprise. You see? Surprise. That's from CNBC. No surprise. It was up in the air. It was going the other way. They did everything they could to try to reverse it. They had the biggest names in politics, from Obama to Abe, from Christine Lagarde to the most brilliant people on Wall Street, warning the people of the UK that if you leave, it's going to be the end of the world. That's right. Crude futures settled down $2.47 or nearly 5%. Financials dipped more than 5% as the greatest laggard. That's right. Go back to the banks and look at the situation of the banking index since the beginning of the year. 
follow the money. The banks are doing lousy. Pound sterling fell more than 10% against the U.S. dollar. It's lowest since 1985. And, of course, David Cameron announced his resignation. He's going to leave in October. What are you waiting for? Why don't you leave now? The Stocks Europe 600 Banks Index had its worst day on record going back to 1987. 1987, the 1987 crash, the worst day since, with a decline of more than 14% to end more than 40% below its 52-week interday high. And gold, of course, is the highest now in more than two years. And on other economic news, to put this all together, because that's what we're saying, this is merely a trigger point to the panic of 08 in the U.S. Shh, don't make a lot of noise about this. Durable good orders fell more than expected 2.2% in May. They're expecting it to decline only 0.5%. So there you have it. That's in a nutshell. And the wrap-up is in your trend alert. That's right, your trend alert. History before it happens. The panic of 08. We forecast that one. On record, took out the domain name in 2007. The panic of 2016. That's right, we did that in 2015. History before it happens. A trend alert with information that you won't get from the prostitute media. Stay tuned. Be cautious. We're forecasting a lot of volatility and a lot of rigging of the markets. This is Gerald Salenti, and that's some of today's trends in the news. Look at the numbers. The numbers don't lie. You saw the Dow yesterday. Bup, up over 200 points across the board. All the indexes up, gold getting knocked down because they're going to stay in the EU. So, of course, we know what happened. They chose to Brexit, stage right. <laughs> We're leaving. It was unanticipated by most, but the important element is that suppose that woman was not killed. The numbers would have been even greater than the 48 that wanted to stay and the 48 that wanted to the EU, a remain vote. So we saw the numbers go in a complete flip, where after that happened, the polls showed that more people wanted to stay in than leave before that happened several percent more wanted to leave than stay. And then they called a halt to campaigning. And then it resumed this past Monday. Going into the vote on Thursday, the polls, the hedge funds, the experts all said the UK is going to stay. They're not going to Brexit. Hi, this is Gerald Salenti. It's Friday, June 24th, 2016. And here are some of today's trends in the news. And what a day this is. A day that will live in infamy. History was made yesterday when the people in the UK exited the EU. That's right. Now let's go back and look at the polls and look at the data. Do you remember what happened just about a week ago? They assassinated Joe Cox, the woman who was a parliamentary member in the United Kingdom. And she was a strong proponent for staying in, leave, a 52, excuse me, that wanted to leave would have been. It would have been much higher. So what this vote is about, it's more than wanting to leave the EU. It's about the very 
fundamentals of society, the general public disgusted with the politicians that are running their country and robbing them of their future. The two elements that drove the people to leave were two issues. The cheap labor forces coming in from Eastern Europe that are part of the Euro's, Euro uh, zone that could freely go between borders, taking away jobs from the British. That's what they said. That's what the Leave camp was rallying on. Plus, they were claiming to lose their national identity and were tired of being globalized. The underlying element is that this was a trigger point to shoot off the bullets that are going to start the panic of 2016 that was our top trend for this year that we released back in December of 2015. The panic of 2016, the cover of the Trends Journal. This was the trigger.